our, our members are a lot more stressed right now in the fact that they're having the Dauphin Dawn on every call, not just, you know, the ones where they think, but every call they have to put on, you know, where the PPE for every call. So that's stressing me out. And you're stressing about bringing home anything to your family members as well. That's probably the biggest stressor that there is out there. Well, with peer support, we're, we're, a lot of the members are doing a lot more check-ins on each other, which is I'm so proud of them type of thing. They're watching each other's back. And they, they, they let, you know, each other know who's getting stressed. Or I think you got to, you know, touch base with specific individuals because they seem a little more stressed than normal. 38 years that I've been here. And probably within that 38 years, I've seen 12 of my coworkers take their lives, you know, via suicide. So it's a, definitely a stressful career and it's not for everyone. So we support a lot of long-term care and a lot of supportive living sites. Along with, we're also supporting a hospital out of the University of Alberta called the Virtual Hospital Program. And with the idea of ha having less people in the hospital and less people that have to visit emergency department. So we basically do all of the treatment and we work with the family doctors and some of our other provincial uh, doctors to keep people out of the hospital and give them their care within their home or their facility. Yeah, so for, for me, my generally my stuff is ready to go in the side of the truck, pop it over. Put on the N95 mask, you know, stretch out the straps a little bit first so they don't break on you. And then gloves that go over top of the cuff to make sure everything stays nice and fluid and pervious. And that's pretty much the COVID PPE that we put on. The putting it on is not very hard. The doffing it is the harder part, taking it off. So that's the steps that you want to go through nice and slowly make sure you don't mess it up. I don't love wearing PPE all the time, but at the same time, I'd rather not get COVID. So, yeah. Certainly the, the PPE or the personal protective equipment and the practices that are in place uh, seem to this point have been doing their, their functions. And really it's the, the diligence of the staff and actually uh, following those processes, whether it's continuous masking, which you, as you see an ambulance driving by with felt lights and sirens, they'll be wearing masks. And they're really doing that to protect one another and to protect the public. And I think really the, the diligence that the, the frontline team members have actually put into that, wearing the PP and following those processes, has really helped uh, avoid any uh, outbreaks with any EMS to this point. So We had more calls with people concerned that they did have COVID or were experiencing uh, symptoms, things like that, and wanted to get checked out. And a lot of our call volume in the beginning um, was for they wanted to get actually tested. And of course, we don't do that, so we'd give them the 811 number. But um, we were still getting all the other calls. People still have strokes, people still have heart attacks, things like that. So our call volume had increased because the regular calls were still coming in. Right now, I would say that it's probably about um, just like a normal, it's just like a normal thing. Like most people aren't calling now um, per se for the, the COVID things unless they do have the flu symptoms and then. Um, but I wouldn't say that it's increased significantly, but with school starting, today's my first day back from our days off. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next couple of weeks, of course, with school and a lot of people going back to work. So today we are doing some asymptomatic COVID swabbing. Um, if anybody wants a swab, they can come up to us here and have that done. Uh, and otherwise we, uh, we, we can do a various number of things in terms of healthcare for this population. We can come out and do wound care. We can uh, um, liaison with their family physician if they have one or try and get them set up with some healthcare processes and, and um, some of the things like other than wound care that we would do might be identifying if they have any infectious processes that need attention or antibiotic therapy and coordinating that care. 
So big changes in all of our protocols. Um, our infection control has gone way up, of course. Um, as, as again, it just has added a totally different disease process onto our radar for um, thinking about what, what process might be involved when somebody's in distress. Um, on this city centre team, we have seen a lot of uh, dislocation of people. So there are, our shelters in the city have, are decreased capacity. Some of them are closed. So it's changed our job because it's changed their lives big time. So when we go into a suspected COVID call now, before we can even approach the house, we have to make sure that we're wearing the gown. We can't be wearing these masks. We have to switch them out for the N95 and uh, do all that before we can even make patient contact. So it does add a few seconds, if not minutes, depending if it's really windy out, because putting on a gown in the wind is quite difficult. <laughs> Uh, so it does, it does change our, um, the way we respond to going into a house or even, you know, we'll go if it's a non-suspect COVID and we go up and we ask if anybody's sick in the house before we enter the house. If they respond to yes, we have to turn around and go back to the truck and change out into the proper uh, protection. I, I'd say it's a little bit stressful, um, but it's, it's also part of dealing with the job. Um, we know we knew coming in that we're the front lines we're the first point of contact medical contact for everyone out there who calls 911 they're having the worst day of their lives we know that this is something that we're going to have to deal with it does add a lot of stress to us um, but i think most of us are able to cope fairly well if we worried about everything that we could catch and all the potentials that are out there it would probably send you into a spiraling depression in all honesty so it's got to be you do the best that you can on every call that you're on and taking care of yourself and letting it go because if i catch it doing all of the things that i'm supposed to be doing and making sure that i don't catch it and i still get it then i've done whatever i could and everything else is out of my hands